On today's episode, I wanted to look at the new Nick Collection 4. It's just out. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Yeah, DxO has just brought out a new version of the Nick Collection. This is the Nick Collection 4. They've rewritten some of the software. So this is a pretty big update. And whenever they do these updates, they put the product on sale. Now it's on sale up till June 30th for 30% off. And that includes upgrades as well. Uh, you can get it by just clicking on my affiliate link in the description below. And it'll take you right to the sales. You don't pay any more for the product. I make a small commission and it helps me to keep these tutorials coming your way and when you do that i really appreciate it and i want to thank you the first thing i want to show you in the nick collection 4 is vivesa 3 it used to be vivesa 2 now vivesa 3 they've totally rewritten it it's a lot faster and there's a lot of really cool new features that i will show you now to launch it you have two different ways of launching it you can come up here to filter and you can well, make sure your layer is selected. Come up here to filter and uh, come to Nick Collection. You can launch it from here. Or you can go up to File and come down to Automate. And you'll find your Nick Selective Tool 2 in here. So I highly recommend that you use it with the Nick Selective Tool here because you're going to have a lot of extra features in here. And I'm going to show you this new meta presets here in a little bit. So stay tuned for that. That's pretty cool stuff. But we're going to launch uh, Vivesa 3, so all we need to do is click right here and we'll launch Vivesa 3. By the way, I'm launching it as a smart object. And the Nick Collection does work as a smart filter, which is really nice. And I'm just getting this warning here. Plugin has identified that the active layer is a smart object and will operate as a smart filter. The brush will be deactivated and the effect will be applied to the current layer. And if you don't want to see this message again, you can check this off. I'm just going to say OK. Straight away, we can see we have our very nice new interface. Nice and dark, modern looking. I like it. We have our uh, preview up here loop. We have our histogram here, and we can view it in different ways. Uh, we have our global adjustments right here. They separated the global adjustments from the um, control points, which is something uh, nice and a, a nice change for uh, Vivesa 3. So these are all your global adjustments here. And now we have selective tones. This is new, so we can come here and adjust our highlights independently, our mid-tones and our shadows and our blacks. And we also have this new white balance here. We didn't have this before, so now we can adjust white balance here. If you're going to use white balance, make sure you check this on, okay? You also have a color picker here and a radius slider. The radius slider is tied to the color picker tool, so you can determine what area it will sample, how many pixels however many pixels you have this set up for here. So if you move the slider to the right, you can see it's going to sample like a 19 pixel area. It defaults at five pixels, and that's generally where I would keep it. So if you just want to neutralize your image, you can use the color picker for that. Or if you just simply want to warm up your image, you can turn on the white balance. And say I want to warm this, I can move the slider to the right and warm my image, or I could cool it down by moving it to the left. Just double click any slider and you'll reset them back to default. Now I'm happy with my global adjustments. So I'm gonna go right down to control points because because to me control points are what Vivesa 3 is all about. So let's click on control point and get a control point. And I'm gonna say I wanna adjust this uh, pink area, this flower right here. So I'm gonna find an area I wanna select like right here and click it and it'll drop a control point. Now, whenever you drop a control point, it's looking at the uh, color of that area under that point. It's looking at the luminosity value there and the textures and things like that. So it's looking at a bunch of different things. It's pretty powerful. We still have this circle around the control point, which is the uh, area that will be influenced by that control point. And we can adjust its size by dragging on the slider here or we can drag on the actual circle itself and make it larger or smaller. And let me show you now, let's come over to our control point. And after I added that control point, uh, a bunch of new sliders have been introduced, a bunch of new adjustments here. And uh, one of my favorite things, and we could we could do this in the past with Avesa, and we can look at the layer mask. So if you click right here, you can see what the actual mask looks like. Now the light areas are being selected a lot. Grayer areas are being selected less. Areas that are black are not being selected at all. This tutorial is not a full tutorial on how to use Vivesa 3, but I'm showing you the new features. And here's one of the greatest new features, and I am super happy about this one, and that is called color selectivity. This 
feature lets you adjust the luminance value and the chrominance value of the mask that you're creating here. And this is this is powerful. Check this out. If I take this luminance slider, it's looking at luminance values. If I move it to the right, it focuses my mask more. And if I move it to the left, it broadens out that adjustment. Now it's only looking at luminance values which I find to be quite amazing. And then with the chrominance slider, we can again focus the color areas, the chrominance area that that control point is seeing. What's under that, it's looking at those colors. Or if I move it to the left here, I can widen it out. Okay, so I can just pinpoint the area that I want to get and really focus that mask into the area I want. And this is huge. And then once you've done that, you can come and click your mask again and you'll be back to your image. And now we can make our adjustment. Now that we have our control point, let's make some adjustments. So we'll make the adjustments right here from these basic adjustments here. Let's go ahead and give it a little bit more saturation. Somewhere right around there. Let's give it a little more brightness just to, you know, bring our viewers attention to that part of the flower. And we have a whole arsenal of controls here. And now we have selective tones, which is really a nice added feature. Thank you, DXO. Something else we can do now is we can come up here and we can double click on control point and give this a name. Like, let me call this flower center, which is nice to be able to name these control points, especially if you're working on an image and you're adding a whole bunch of control points and you're working from smart objects. And when you come back in, you can see everything that you've done if you needed to come back and do some re-editing. So it's nice to be able to name your control points. And I really like that new addition. I'm pretty sure that's a new addition. I don't think you could do that before. Now, let me show you something cool that you can now do in Vivesa 3 that you couldn't do before. And let's go ahead and grab another control point and put it right up here. A lot of times in my images, I like to add like a nice little circle of light. And you'll see that here in a second. But first, we have to do something. So let's come over to this control point we just added, control point 4. And by the way, if you're asking yourself, hey, why does it say control point 4 when you only added one control point so far? I had the video shut off, and I was experimenting with how to show this to you. And so I added a couple extra control points. That's why it says 4, just in case you were wondering. I didn't want to confuse you. I deleted those control points. That's why they don't show up in this list. The next thing we have to do is turn on the mask of that control point just by clicking right there. And then remember this new color selectivity. This is why you couldn't do it before. So here's what I'm going to do. Watch carefully. Take this luminance slider, move it the whole way to the left. And then take the chrominance slider, move it the whole way to the left. And look, we have a beautiful gradient here. Isn't that cool? Now let's come here and shut off the mask. And now I'm going to come to the brightness adjustment and I'll start to move it to the right and just to lighten up that area inside of that circle that I've created just to give it a nice bit of a glow and just work with it. Now this type of effect will work on all kinds of images and we can also add some color tint to it if we wanted to warm it up or we can take the structure slider here and bump it to the left and kind of soften that area and let it have a nice dreamy glow to it. And there you have it, a circle gradient right inside of Vivesa 3. Now, if you have other images that you want to add this effect to, you could save this as a preset. Just come here and click on Save Preset. Give your preset a name and you can also check this here and say save with control points and save the control points right along with the preset. So that's pretty cool and that's new. If you don't want to save the control point, just uncheck it. I'm just going to cancel out of here for now because I'm not going to save this preset. And when you're all done, all you need to do is click apply and that'll send you right back into Photoshop. I clicked apply and watch how quick this sends us right back into Photoshop. I've never seen Vivesa 2 work that fast, so that is a really great improvement. The speed of processing your image back to Photoshop is really fast. Let's take a look at the before. Here's the before and here's the after. Added that extra color and lightness to the center of this flower. And I added that radial gradient right up in here. We couldn't do this before in Vivesa 2, but now we can do that in Vivesa 3. So that's pretty cool. Hey, leave comments and questions in the comment section below and let me know what you think. And did you enjoy how quick that processed this image back into Photoshop? Now we'll go on to another example. Now let's move on to this image and I want to show you Silver Effects Pro 3, not 2. They've uh, updated uh, Pro 2 to Pro 3, rewritten it. It's faster. They've added new features. I'm excited to show this to you. So Vivesa and Silver Effects have both 
gone through some major updates and hopefully the other pieces of the Nick collection will follow suit in some future updates. I'm sure that's going to happen. I've already duplicated my background layer and turned it into a smart object, smart filter. So now let's go ahead and launch Silver Effects Pro 3. I'm not going to spend too much time here. I just want to show you some of the new features. We still have our presets over here on the left. The interface has changed. It looks different. I believe our uh, loop has been moved. It used to be on the bottom. It's now at the top with our histogram. Very nice. And then we have this area where we can see the different zones of the black and white image. You know, from the very light zones the whole way down through the zones. And when you hover over these zones, you can see where those zones lie. Like zone two is this orange area in here, right? And if you uncheck this here, you when you hover over these zones, you won't see the the uh, colored lines showing you where they're at. So I like to leave this checked on. So when I hover over, I can see where my zones are at. And there's a good reason for that. Well, I'll save that for another video. Now let me show you one of the really cool adjustments that uh, DxO have added to uh, Silver Effects. Now we have all the original adjustments here like brightness, dynamic brightness, which we all know and love that use Silver Effects, as well as soft contrast, amplify whites and blacks, and then all the great structure can structure controls we can break the structure down to highlights midtones and shadows all that really cool stuff but now they've added clear view which comes from dxo photo lab and it is basically a dehazing filter clarifying filter it adds clarity it does a lot of things at once but you won't get a bunch of halos and things like that this is probably the best dehazing type clarifying filter in the industry and i would say it is the best in my opinion but we can do things like this, add some really nice detail to our image by taking this clear view slider and moving it to the right. Let me start to move this to the right and watch the image change. Look at that beautiful detail contrast and clarity boost that the image gets. And you won't see halos or anything like that. Now, that's probably too much. I'm going to back it off just a little bit. Now, let me show you. Here's the before. If you click this checkbox here, here's the before and here's the after. But look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I think you're going to really come to love this slider in Silver Effects. And I'm super excited about it. Another addition to Silver Effects is Film Grain. Now, this is brought over from uh, DxO's Film Pack 5, which emulates real film grain in real black and white films, which I find this fascinating fascinating and it does a really great job if you want to add that authenticity of a black and white film grain to your images. I think it's great. And you have all these different films that you can work with. Just to give you a bit of a recap in Silver Effects Pro 3, DxO have added a new dark interface, which I really enjoy. Let me know what you think about it in the comments section below. They've added clear view from Photo Lab. They've added uh, film grains from uh, Film Pack 5. Who knows what else they'll bring into this? It's exciting to see where the future of the Nick collection is going. It's going in a good direction, I think. Let me know what you think. But this is uh, Silver Effects Pro. Pro 3. Before I click apply and send us back to Photoshop, take a look down here in the bottom left hand corner and it tells us you're modifying this image number from Adobe Photoshop 2021. So now they let us know where this has come from in case we forgot. So that's something new as well. Now I'm going to go ahead and click apply and I have one more thing to show you uh, from the Nick collection. This is processing in real time, so this is how long it takes. Pretty darn quick, wouldn't you say? I have one final thing to show you, and that is the meta presets. And they're found inside of the uh, selective tool. And here they are right here. Now there's 10 different presets. Now hopefully they'll add more along the way. Now each one of these presets are given a name. And if you go to the left of the preset, you'll see a little question mark. This particular preset, Colopsia, if I click on it, it tells me it emulates a glamorous black and white rendering to enhance the beauty of the image. Next to the preset name, you'll see two badges. Uh, this badge represents Color Effects Pro 4. This badge uh, represents Silver Effects Pro 3. So it's going to add those two plugins to an image. I'm going to go ahead and grab a different image this time and I'm going to use this flower and we're going to apply the um, Colopsia preset to the flower. Now this is very important. Do not apply it to the original layer. Duplicate the layer you want to add the effect to and convert it to a smart object 
because if you don't, you're not going to be able to go back and re-edit the image. So remember that this is a very vital and important step. And now to apply this effect, just click on the preset you want to uh, add the effect to, and it'll go ahead and process out your image. I'm going to let this run in real time, and I think it'll first run uh, Color Effects Pro 4 on it, and then when it's done with that, it'll send it into Silver Effects Pro 3 and add the black and white conversion to it, and now it will output back to Photoshop, and there it is, and that's pretty quick actually. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this uh, selective tool. When I minimize it, you see it goes down here. And then you can call it back up just by clicking right here. So let me go ahead and minimize it. And let's go ahead and shut off uh, Silver Effects Pro 3 and see what the Color Effects Pro 4 looks like by itself. It'll have to take a second here because it'll have to reprocess itself. And, you know, that's the way it is with smart filters. They take a little bit of time. But that's what the image looks like after it was sent back from Color Effects Pro 4. So if I shut this layer 1 off here, you can see there's the original. That's my result after Color Effects Pro 4. Now, I could come back here, double-click this, and send it back into Color Effects Pro 4 and make some changes on it. Or I could go and let's click on Silver Effects Pro three here and it'll render out and add that silver effects black and white conversion back onto it and then if i didn't like the setting here and you know it says it's rendering its smart filters so you got to be patient when you're using smart objects that's why i don't use them a whole lot to be honest with you because they take some time but here's our result now i could double click silver effects pro 3 and go and make some changes on this if i wanted to but there it is well, there you go, everyone. Uh, the Nick Collection 4. That was a first look, and there's a lot of really cool new features. They've rewritten uh, Vivesa 2. It's now Vivesa 3, and also uh, Silver Effects Pro 2, which is now Silver Effects Pro 3. Most of the other software stayed the same, but I think it's all going to get a rewrite in. It's all going to be worked upon, and that is an exciting future for the Nick Collection. And I think DxO are taking this in the right direction. Let me know in the comments section below what you think about this new uh, Nick Collection 4. If you enjoyed the tutorial today, please give it a like, share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.